This video walks you through a DIY setup to perform a compression test on your engine while it's still on the engine stand. I use a portable charge pack, a 3D printed spacer for the starter, and a remote starter trigger to make this test quick and easy and portable. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. I'm back in Fremont at my buddy Dave's house and we're continuing this factory five A18R build but before we move on to the 818 chassis, we're gonna do a little bit more prep on this engine. And the next thing we're gonna do is actually run a compression test on this engine. Because if you guys saw my recent videos on my 1998 RS, I actually had a low compression cylinder before. So before we install this engine or do any more prep on this engine, we're actually gonna test the compression on this engine using this little setup we have right here. And to turn the engine over, we actually have a little battery jump pack right here. It's a common little jump pack you guys can get from any automotive parts store or you can get it from my Amazon store as well. And these little jump packs are actually used to turn that starter over and it'll apply the 12 volts and the amperage necessary to turn the starter over and to run the engine. In addition to that little jump pack, I actually have a little remote engine starter right here. You can actually get these from any automotive parts store or from my Amazon store as well. With this little starter, you can actually hit the button. It'll actually hit the trigger on that starter so it'll turn the engine over by hitting this button. So that's the basic setup guys. I got the jump pack right here to take the place of the battery. I got my little starter trigger right here to turn the starter on and to turn over the engine. And then I've got my compression tester right here screwed into cylinder number four so we can actually read the pressure in that cylinder. And then last but not least, you're gonna have to space that starter at the right distance away from the back of that engine block. And the distance is actually 50 millimeters. And any way you create that distance will be just fine. You can use a hollow tube or spacers or even shims and washers. But my buddy Dave actually 3D printed the correct spacer with the holes in it so he could actually hold that starter and it'll actually line everything perfectly at that 50 millimeter distance. And I'm actually gonna include a link to the files for this 3D printed part in the description below. So that's a basic setup. If you wanna run a compression test on your engine, but it's not in your car and it's not bolted up to transmission, but you still wanna run a compression test to check all those cylinders before you take that engine and drop it into your car. Okay, this is cylinder number four. Okay, this is cylinder number two. A little bit lower there, about 110, maybe even a little 115 at one point, but around 110 PSI. So I'd say cylinder number two is a little bit low. This engine actually has 166,000 miles and it's been sitting for a little while. And it's pretty common to get a little bit of dust and crud and oil on those valve seats and to knock that stuff off once the engine starts running with that fuel as kind of a degreaser and that valve, smacking that valve seat to kind of knock off that residue and oil. So I suspect once this engine starts running, it might have a little bit higher PSI in these cylinders. But for right now, it has a little bit low PSI in cylinder number two. This is cylinder number one. One hundred and fifty PSI, even a little higher, one hundred and fifty four probably. And last, we're looking at cylinder number three. Right at one hundred and fifty PSI. So the summary for the cylinder compression test, we have cylinders one, two, three, and four. Cylinders one and three had about 150 PSI. I think one actually had 154 PSI. So we're basically at about 150 PSI in cylinders one and three, that's good. On cylinders two and four, on the other hand, we had a little bit lower compression in cylinder number two. Cylinder two had about 115 PSI, and cylinder number four had about 125 PSI. So we're a little bit low on this side. I suspect it might just be a little bit of crud and oil that got into the valve seats. Either way, this is good enough compression to move forward with freshening up this engine and then getting it installed in this 818R. Shout out to Flatirons Tuning, guys. If you guys don't know Flatirons Tuning, they're out of Boulder, Colorado. They actually have a lot of history with motorsports. This is their cute little logo. It's their little Flatirons uh, ox or mule. What the fuck is this thing, anyways? Flatironstuning.com. I don't know what it is. 
It's a buffalo, huh? Oh, it is a buffalo, because they have buffalo up there. This is their little logo, their little mascot, the little flat irons buffalo with the crazy eyes. Uh, this guy's been around on some of their cars for years. Here's your other little logo they gave us. Stay tuned. Check out their stuff, guys. Flat Iron Tunings. They have a YouTube channel. They also have a shop and they have a dealership up in Boulder, Colorado. So they have tons of access to all these OEM parts. They're very knowledgeable. And this is actually their PCV kit. They actually sell an entire kit. All these kits are OEM parts, guys. So you actually have OEM part numbers on everything. And they basically just assemble these kits from their OEM, basically Subaru parts dealership. And they put them all in a box for you guys and they'll sell them as one whole complete kit. And they also are really knowledgeable and they're really helpful on the phone, guys. So you actually need any help from these guys, just give them a call. Flatiron Tuning in Colorado, USA. They'll give you guys a hand with any of the Subaru related questions you have. And like I said, they have a ton of experience with motorsport applications. These guys have been racing their cars for years all over the USA.